G'day, you bloody dickheads. The Vaping Fucking Bogan. Back once again for another Dinky Die review. How the fuck are you lot? Hope you all had a bonzer weekend. Got ourselves a couple of tubes from Viva La Cloud over in Russia. The L Thunder 2700 version. So this is a follow up to the original L Thunder I uh, reviewed a while back, but they've gone with the 2700 battery configuration, which is brilliant. Lovely pearl white. I've got the uh, the drop RDA on there from uh, Digi Flavor and Vapor Chronicles with a, uh, a signature tips drip tip up the top there. So that's that fucking setup. And then we've got the L Thunder Light. Now this one's an 18650 like the original, but it's made from aluminium, the tube, hence the fucking name Light or aluminum for the fucking Americans. But yeah, much the same sort of uh, design on both of these with the switch. You've got that prong system, the content contact um, design, really, really fucking uh, nice switch. They've changed it a little bit for the aluminum and you'll see why in the up and bloody close. But yeah, very fucking uh, well designed switch on the original and they have not disappointed with, uh, with the new ones. Let's have a fucking toot, shall we? I've got a ridiculously low build in the drop here. I'm not even gonna tell you what the resistance is. It is well below 0.1 and it's not recommended for fucking newbies. <laughs> As you can see, plenty of fucking clouds. I think, yep, I've still got the fan on, so it's kind of whirly birding around. Anyway, dickheads, uh, in the light, I've got my bonzer atop there, a bit of fucking matchy match, mix and match gold bonzer, black bonzer with a drip tip from um, District 5 if you're fucking wondering. Just got my usual uh, game over man, aliens in here from Cloud Revolution, 0.11 usually, fucking cheers. There you go, dickhead. So, before we get into any more of either of those two, let's quickly talk advocacy. Boring stuff, I know, but every fucking video, I wanna make a point that all of us should be doing our parts for this industry because believe it or not, there are corporations, there are governments, there are fucking news you know, corporations trying to put out bullshit information, bullshit regulations that are going to obviously ruin the industry and make it harder for people to quit smoking. So we need to do our part. Go down to the information in the description and join those advocacy groups at the bare minimum. Write your local representatives, your local politicians, and tell them if they don't support vaping, then you aren't fucking voting for them, because that's what counts. All right, let's have a beer, dickheads, as always. Now, I've had this one before. We've featured it on camera, but it wasn't the can version. This is the uh, the can version. It's a rotten back. Uh, so these are like uh, oak barrel aged, um, sour beers. So they do a couple of different variations. They do canned and they do some um, bottles and, and that not whatnot. I believe these are a mixture of barrel aged and fresh brew. So they brew a bunch, they chuck them in barrels for a year or two, and then they mix that usually with a third fresh beer. Anyway, they're one of the best fucking Belgium sour ales you can get. Let's get into it. Well, there you go, dickheads. Have a look at that. It is shit brown poo. There you go. Very nice colour. And, uh, oh, yes. It's different to some of the other sours that I featured recently from Western breweries, which have gone with more of a, um, a clear sort of uh, sour ale. This is in that sort of traditional Belgium, darker, sort of sweeter sours, if, if that makes any sense. I find the Belgians with a little bit more sweetness to them and uh, some other flavours you don't get with the sort of clearer uh, sours. Anyway, fucking cheers. Oh yeah, goes down a fucking treat. I like these so much, I bought a fucking carton of them and they're great as an everyday beer or even on a fucking special occasion. As I said, you get that sort of sourness that you get with most decent sour beers, but you get a little bit of that sort of Belgium sweetness, a little bit of that sort of darker kind of caramel sort of notes, some sort of dried fruit in there, apricots and that kind of thing. Really, really nice um, sort of thick mouthfeel as well compared to some of the thinner, lighter sours out there. Mm. Yeah, that is always a good fucking beer. Anyway, what are we gonna pair it up with? Well, got a, a local Aussie brew that I've been uh, enjoying the shit out of. This one here from uh, Bunyip, is it? Bunyip Vapes or Bunyip? <clears throat> it is a watermelon lemonade. 
I like it so much, I've got a big fucking bottle of it now, don't I? Uh, it's a refreshing homemade lemonade with luscious watermelon and a dash of raspberry. I'm not big on my watermelon vapes normally. I like a few here and there, but this is really nice, the watermelon and that raspberry in there. It's real good with, uh, with that lemonade. Beautiful, beautiful sort of flavours. Anyway, should go well with this. Oh yeah. Oh fuck yes. Basically comes like a sour watermelon lemonade. That is a really good pairing. Yeah, the sours, sour flavors are going just delightfully with the fucking watermelon and the raspberry lemonade flavors. Just a beautiful fucking pairing that. Anyway, dickheads. Enough chuff, fucking chit chat, let's get down to the up and bloody close. We'll have a squiz at these, they're really, really simple. There's nothing that you need to unscrew to take these apart. The switch is completely just, you know, tool free in terms of uh, taking it apart. So we'll have a quick squiz at that and we'll jump back up top and I'll give you the pros, cons, price and everything fucking else. All fucking righty kids, so this is the packaging I got my L Thunders in. The light just came in this sort of bubble wrapped paper bag with some, um, you know, labeling, bit of uh, stuff on the back there about it. Not much, it's all in fucking Russian. And then the, uh, the 2700 came in the same sort of uh, packaging. The original came in this nice sort of wood um, tube thing, which is kind of neat, nice little bit of packaging, but Let's take a look at these two and what came inside of the fucking packaging. So, uh, both of them come with an alternative contact. Uh, if you have a longer 510 pin on your atomizer, then you want to use the uh, this contact here, which has got a shorter contact sort of point um, for the for longer 510s. And if you obviously have a, a, a shorter 510, um, well then you're going to use the one that is pre-installed. So that's just a little silver plated contact, I believe there, white Delrin around it. We'll show you how they work in a second. The uh, 2700 will also come with an 18650 adapter. So that's what that looks like. And obviously the uh, the long 510 um, contact as well. And a little instruction manual, much like on the outside of the light, just sort of breaks down the different parts of it, but it is all in Russian. I don't think there's any English on here at all. Um, so yeah, given that this mod is going to be sold everywhere, uh, I would suggest putting in some uh, some English on here, guys. But um, there is some dimensions on it: 86.5 millimeters by 26 millimeters at its widest point. Alrighty, so let's have a look at the 2700. As you can see, I've got the fucking white one here. It also comes in a, uh, a brass finish and a black finish. The white and the black will have this really, really nice sort of textured. Um, paintwork on it, same as the uh, the original one had, but um, I'm not sure the process is exactly what they've done here. It is really, really nice and thick, very durable. We haven't had any issues with any paint chipping off. Even on the top up here, you can see it's very, very thick. Nothing has scraped off screwing Addies on and off. Um, but yeah, get right in there with that fucking camera and you can see that texture. How nice is that? Really, really nice feeling in the hand. It feels smooth, but it feels textured. It's like a, it's like a smooth sandpaper, if you know what I mean. It doesn't, doesn't grip um, like sandpaper does, but it feels textured. It's really fucking nice. I love this paint job. So they've got L Thunder on the side here, 2700. You've got uh, a serial number on the back there, 166. They've kind of kept the uh, the theme from the original one with this sort of gap in the middle here. It's 26 millimeters on the outside and it thins to 24 in here. You got a bit of ribbing there for your fucking pleasure though, dickheads. Very nice. And it just nestles into your hand. It just feels so comfortable to stick you into your fucking groove here between your, your finger and your thumb. Just wants to sit in there, it's beautiful. Does taper a little bit at the top. Tapers down to, I think, uh, 24 or 25 millimeters. I think it tapers to 24, and as you can see, if you put a 25 on there, um, you don't even really notice that sort of half mil of overhang. So 24, 25 millimeters are gonna look really nice on here. Uh, you've got a hybrid connection up the top there, so make sure you do understand, uh, you know, hybrid, uh, you know, safe 
five, ten pins. Okay, make sure the pin is protruding from the bottom of the atomizer. You can see here on the Bonza, and you see how that pin is protruding out from the threading here. This is safe for a hybrid mechanical tube. If that pin's not protruding on your atomizer, don't use it on a hybrid mech mod. Now let's have a look at the switch. The switch is the most interesting, I think, of this uh, mechanical fucking tube. You've got a brass switch here, a bit of venting through that hole there, as you can see, and uh, you unscrew the bottom to get to your switch mechanism. As you can see, all beautifully machined in there. It is a brass material underneath the, um, the paint and you've got this very unique switch design. It's the same principle as the original. They have changed it just slightly. Here's the OG, um, and they've got some slight variations on the prongs. I'm not sure why they've done that. Maybe to improve sort of the uh, overall smoothness of the switch, but whatever the reason, they've gone for the slight changes. But yeah, you can see the difference sort of there in that. Basically how this works is, it's a pretty simple design. You've got these prongs, they're always making contact with your switch here. And there's obviously some resistance as you push in on there. What that means is, is you've got so many contact points around here for your switch to make contact with the outside of the tube. So you've got really, really low voltage drop because of those constant contact points. But also, because this slides in and out, all right, when you've got a battery in here, this is springy, it's gonna slide in and out of here. And what it actually does is sliding in and out, it keeps these contact points clean because obviously you've got friction up and down, up and down. And you can see here, um, those sort of wear marks and it keeps it all very smooth and clean. So it's actually a self-cleaning switch because of that sort of constant movement of the contacts. Now, it's a constant contact between the brass section of the switch and the uh, brass prongs of the tube. Where the actual sort of magic happens is in here with the switch. You've got your battery. Where's my fucking battery? I've got a, uh, what is this, a Sanyo 2700A with a, uh, a wrap on it from um, ODB. Old dirty bastards. And what is basically happening is this contact here is making always contact with the bottom of your battery there, okay? However you do it, top or bottom, it's always making contact. And then as you push in on the switch here, the inside of this guy here, all right, the silver plated contact in there, makes contact with the brass tube here, and obviously that is making contact with these lugs or little fins on the tube, and that's how you complete the circuit. So your, your battery is always in contact, and then as the, uh, the contact that's touching your battery makes contact with your uh, tube, that is, um, or your contact inside the tube, that is how you complete the circuit. Now the only little gripe I've got with this switch design is they've changed the contact from the original switch. Okay, so you've got the original switch here, which instead of having a, a silver plated contact that met with the uh, the, the end of your battery, uh, the end of your button, um, they actually had the, the button itself poking through. Okay, so your spring compressed and the contact that was actually at the, the base of the button is the one making contact with your battery, which is fine. And this contact size here is you know, a good size in relation to the positive end of your battery. It's a good, good size there. It's smaller than the positive end of your battery. So I had no issues with that. Because they've made this wider now, the contact point on here, um, you may find that some battery wrappers are actually making contact with the switch um, as well as the uh, the positive end of your battery, not not just the um, the, the contact though, but the actual battery wrapper. Um, now it's not something an issue here on this battery because this contact is slightly raised up from my wrapping, and as you can see there, there's a, a nice sizable gap, um, and so I know that the only thing making contact with uh, with the switch is the contact on the battery. Um, obviously, negative end that's not a problem, but I like to have the positive end of my battery facing um, the, the, the vent hole on my mod. Okay, that's just me. I like to have my venting, you know, as close to the positive end of my battery as possible. Now, I know a lot of people out there don't like to put positive end down in their in their tubes because of the, uh, you know, the danger of obviously creating a hard short if your battery wrapper has a tear in it, and that's just fine. If you like to put positive end up, negative end down, then you won't have an issue with this contact system because this contact is gonna be wider than the contact on 
the, the, um, the surface area on the negative end of your battery. But for those that like to have the positive end down facing the vent holes, you may find that, you know, depending on your battery, with this one here it's not a problem, but if you look at the iJoys, you can see there that, you know, my contact is kind of touching wrapper as well as the, uh, the top of the battery, the positive end of the battery. So that's just something to be aware of um, if you like to go positive end down on your battery. Um, it doesn't really matter in my opinion which way you do it because it's still creating a circuit but I know that some people have concerns because of obviously their positive um, end you know, up versus positive end down. They like to have the positive end up. That's, fine. that's just fine but venting is out the bottom. So just be aware of that. You can't can make up your own fucking mind as to uh, which way you want to fucking do it. So there you go, dickheads, with the drop RDA on top looking very nice with the sort of gold and gold, matchy match golden brass. Got that uh, signature tip, white drip tip on there, again, making it very nice. Um, and what, you know, what you, I have to say about this switch is it's so, so nice and smooth. Um, I can hit it from any angle and it fires. Doesn't matter where I press it, it's smooth, it's springy and it fires every fucking time. So I do love, love, love this switch design. Um, quick comparison up against some other sort of 2700 tube mods. Um, here is the Vapors Cloud XXX, no, the 1111 this is. It's quite a bit shorter, as you can see, than the 1111, um, and it is still even shorter than the, uh, the Dreamer. Um, both of these 2700s. However, these um, take 21700s as well. The L Thunder 2700 does not accept the 21s, okay? Only 20s, but that'll give you a bit of a size comparison. Let's have a look at the light. So we have the light version. It does take a single 18650 battery, and as you might have already noticed, it's super, super clean and minimal. They haven't put any logos on here. They haven't put any sort of engravings. They've just keep it, kept it very, very fucking minimal, which I really like. It's, it's nice to get a very minimal tube. So they've gone with a similar sort of idea with the sort of uh, stuff in the middle, but they haven't gone with a, a big sort of gap. Um, they've just gone with some ribbing, a bit of ribbed, ribbedness there, dickheads. And uh, again, a hybrid top cap, all right? So make sure that you're using safe fucking 510 pins. Uh, diameter is 24 millimeters. So very, very good for anything 24. Let's just screw the bonzer on here, show you what that looks like. Very nice, have a look at that. That gold and, uh, and black coming together fucking nicely. Beautiful stuff. So again, it has that fantastic sort of uh, finish to it. Slight uh, sort of matte, but with a bit of a shine there. And uh, switch down the bottom. Looks very similar from the outside, but they have changed things. Because you've got a uh, an aluminium uh, tube, you can't do the prongs on the uh, the mod end of it because you know aluminium is not as flexible as uh, as brass and uh, materials like that. So you're going to need something um, a bit different. So what they've done is they've fucking reversed it and they've put the prongs on the switch. Okay, and there's your there's your your switch there sliding in with the prongs. Um, and uh, same principle though, very much the same principle. You've got the prong system over here. You've got this contact making contact with the silver plated contact on the inside here, and as you can see, I've got a little bit of arcing, you can see a little bit of arc marks there, but they're very faint. They're very faint, they're not big black ones. I haven't cleaned this contact at all in the last week and a half that I've been using this. So I have to say that the arcing is very, very minimal with this design. Um, and if you want to swap out the contacts, uh, like I said before, so it's very minimal, but you can see that there is a slight extra length here on this contact as opposed to this one. So this is going to have a shorter throw on it. All right, and then this one is going to have a longer throw. So if you've got a long 510 pin on your atomizer and you find the, the throw is too short, um, or you know may even just auto fire, swap it out, put it with uh, this contact here, and Bob's your fucking uncle. And it's as uh, simple as just popping it into that spring there, and then popping it into the button itself, and that's about it. Drop that kind in there. Fucking drop that in there. I might need a battery, it's always good. Old dirty bastard, fucking get in there, sunshine. Um, and very much the same sort of uh, situation with this contact. It's a wide one, so you know, you may need to go negative end towards the button. Very nice. 
Anyway, dickheads, uh, that's about it. Size-wise, it's uh, pretty much bang on with the original L Thunder. There's no real difference in height um, in either of them. But uh, width-wise, this one is just a straight 24 millimeters all the way down. So very fucking nice. Anyway, dickheads, that is the fucking L Thunders. Let's jump back up top. Let's give you the pros, the cons, the price, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads, a bit of a squeeze at a couple of L Thunders. And as you can see, like the first one, is a fucking top-notch little uh, couple of mech tubes here. Really, really good build quality. Outstanding fucking paint. And, uh, and those switches, it's a very, very well fucking designed switch. Fucking love it. Anyway, dickheads, let's talk fucking pros and bloody cons. What did I like? What did I not like? I love, love, love the finish on both of these mods um, and on the originals, you know, whether you go the, the nice brass fitter finish or you go one of the painted options, love what they've done with the fucking finish. Now, there's a couple of other options I didn't realize were available. I was looking at the Viva La Cloud website directly and they only had three colors listed, but I've seen it on a number of other websites. There's also a green available in the 2700 and like a beige. Uh, there's the black and the white and possibly something else. And in the light version, there's the black and then just a, uh, a raw aluminium, sort of like a brushed aluminium kind of finish, which looks really fucking sweet as well. So there is a few other finishes and they all look fucking grouse. So I love what they've done there. Love the fucking switches on these. Um, yeah, I love the first one. Really, really ingenious fucking design. Uh, constant contact with the uh, the tube, the way that the switch works with that contact meeting another contact. Very fucking smart. You can hit it anywhere on that button and it fires every fucking time. So really like the switch design. Um, the performance is outstanding. You know, this is definitely one of the hardest hitting tubes both of them. Um, you know, the 2700, I feel, hits a little bit harder than, you know, a lot of 18650 tubes, but that's down to the fucking battery that you can get. Um, I've got a really nice, really, really good battery in here. One of the uh, the Sanyo 2700As, very, very low voltage sag. Performance is, is very good, and it definitely, you know, feels like it hits just a little bit harder than some of the other, um, you know, 18650s out there. Uh, on the on the light again, you know the materials don't really play a huge part in mechanicals, you know, and and mods. It's down to the the switch and the threads and everything else. And this one here is a good example of that. This hits as hard, I reckon, as you know my brass L Thunder, um, and as hard as many other really hard hitting fucking tubes out there. So I definitely put this up there in the hardest fucking hitting category. I don't do voltage drop tests because I don't have anything I believe accurate enough to give you voltage drop. So this is just my comparison, you know, to other mods that I've owned and used. But both of them right up there in terms of the fucking uh, voltage drop and uh, and high performance. Uh, I love the sleek design on both of these. Very sort of minimal. The 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 2700's got a few sort of engravings and what on there, but it's a very very minimal sort of looking tube. Um, particularly the light. If you like clean tubes, you know, if you want to just go black and black and whatever. Very fucking uh, nice designs on both of these. Build quality, as I said, exceptional paintwork. Threads are buttery smooth. Everything was clean. There was no burrs or spurs or anything like that. Um, 510 connections, all perfect. So build quality, definitely fucking right up there. Uh, what else can I fucking say about it? Um, you know, the ergonomics of both of them, but particularly I think the 2700 with this sort of nice little indent here, just slots into your hand really nicely. Um, it's a wider gap than the um, the original Elf Thunder had, so you've got a little bit more sort of room there to nestle it in. And I have to say that, yeah, it's one of the most comfortable tubes that I own. So cons wise, I don't really have a fucking lot to whinge about here. I'm nitpicking. The only little sort of complaint that I've got is just they've increased the surface area on the contact from the original one. It says on the website by about 10.5% the surface area, which is all good and well, but 
if you wanna go positive and down, and I know a lot of people don't like to go positive and down because of obviously the issue of creating a hard short if you've got a tear in the top of your battery wrap, but I like, you know, in a design like this with the venting to be, you know, in the bottom, I like to have my negative end up and my positive end pointing out to the uh, the venting end of the battery. And that's not always possible with, um, with the battery that you've got in here, depending on whether your positive contact juts out enough. It does on the Sanyo 2700A, but on the iJoys, it doesn't really jut out enough and you kind of got a bit of contact touching a bit of battery wrap. So that's my little issue there. If you, you don't like going positive end down and you go positive end up, it's not a fucking issue because you've usually got plenty of fucking room on the negative end of your battery for that contact. Um, it goes for both the the, um, the light and the, uh, and the 2700. So it's not a big deal. You know, I know a lot of people don't even care with what I'm talking about because they always want to go positive end of the battery up, making contact with the 510 of your atomizer. But for those that like to go positive end down, me included, um, not always going to be possible depending on your battery wrap situation. Hopefully that fucking made sense. But apart from that, I've got nothing to whinge about here. The build quality is exceptional. The paint has held up really fucking well. I've been using these tubes day in, day out for the last week and a half and I haven't got a single nick or scratch or anything on them. Performance is fucking absolutely awesome. So they're doing exactly what they should be fucking doing. They look fucking the tits. The build quality's there, so there's really not much to complain about. What is it gonna fucking set you back? Well, these sent, were sent directly from Viva La Cloud, so fucking cheers dickheads for passing them on. No, it doesn't change my opinion. I give it to you straight. They're selling in the United States on a few sites for around about $150 to $160 US, which is not too fucking bad. Depends on the paint option that you go for. There's some variations of about 10 bucks. In the UK, you're looking at around about the same sort of money, 150 pounds, 160 pounds, depending on what color variation you go for. On the light version, really, really affordable, very well priced at 90 to 100 bucks US, um, depending on whether you go for the brushed or the, uh, the black. And in the UK, you're only looking at 65 fucking pounds for the light edition. So uh, very, very well priced if you're a, if you're a fucking pom. Um, 65 fucking schmackos, not bad. But it doesn't matter whether you go for the, the 2700 um, or the uh, light version uh, or whatever paint you know you go for, I think the price is pretty damn fucking good considering the build quality and the, the design. You know, you, you don't have most of your fucking mech mods out there with as, as well designed switch as this. So definitely I think worth the fucking dosh. Nobody in Australia has either of these just as yet from what I could see. However, I'm aware that Vaporize is, is thinking about getting some of these in. So if they do, I'll put a, uh, an update in the uh, description to, uh, to a link for that one. But yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be probably around about the sort of $200 mark Australian, I would say, for the, um, for the fucking uh, 2700. And you're probably looking at around about, uh, you know, the 130, 150 sort of mark for the light or something like that. But yeah, very decent. So I'll put some links in the description to a few places selling these in the US and the UK, but do your own research, find you know your own uh, sort of best price from your favorite site. I'll also include my usual Instagram and Facebook links if you wanna check out what I'm fucking doing outside of the YouTubes. And if you wanna check out uh, my support pages, please fucking do. I am 100% independent. I don't accept funding, sponsorships, or affiliate links. There's no paid reviews here. I wanna keep it unbiased and independent for you fuckers. But to keep doing that, well, public support is always loved. So you can hit my Bogan Brews juice lineup. There's some links down below, and there's also my Patreon page where there's prizes and giveaway and content that you won't fucking get here and little special other groups that we've got going with the Patreon. So if you can't do that, that's all good. Just sit back, sub home your fucking dicks off, sub home your fucking tits off, but above all, stay off the bloody stinkies. I don't care how you're fucking doing it, whether it's a Russian fucking tube, a Chinese tube, a Yankee tube, a UK tube, an Aussie tube, your mum's fucking tube, as long as you're not banging the bungers. That's what fucking matters, dickheads. Cheers for tuning in. And cheery fucking eye. Doing top bloody notch. Hope you had a fucking great weekend. <coughs> Fuck. Walk and L. Walk and L. G'day, bloody dickheads. The. <coughs>
<clears throat> got ourselves a couple of fucking tubes from Viva La Cla <laughs> Fuck. G'day, you bloody dickheads. The vaping fucking bogan. Back once again for another Dinky Die review. 